Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over SEMrush now along with their backlink gap tool, give you a little bit tutorial, talk about how it works, which I can do right here. This allows you to compare domains as you're going to see right here, whether you want one competitor, two, three or four total, you can find prospects and of course receive domains to target. Overall, you're looking at a very quick way to see what some of the best backlinks that they have that you can go after that you don't have yet course, allowing you to rank higher in Google, which is what we all want. So in case you're not familiar with SEMrush, they do come with a free trial. I will put a link down in the description below in case you'd like to test them out. So before we begin, in case you're not familiar with your competitors, you probably should know them if you know your niche very well. If you're new to it, that's completely fine. What you can do is put in your main domain and if you in the uh, domain overview right here, and if you scroll down, you're going to see some of your biggest competitors. So for main organic competitors, uh, and pretty much you can go with any of these here. You can go with a few of them. I'm going to specifically go with Chris Digital. He has a great website. He writes about a lot of the similar things that I do. So I'll put that in this root domain here. And if you want, you can add more, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to go with two and let's click on find prospects. Okay. And it's going to be sorted naturally by the authority score. As you can see right here, if I hover over this, it's their proprietary metric used to measure overall quality of domain and influence on SEO. Probably a big reason why uh, Twitter is up there. You know, things like Facebook, Twitter, and like a very big social media platforms are going to be up there just because of the amount of visits, the amount of backlinks that's naturally sent to them. You can also sort by best, weakest, strong, shared, unique, or all. I'd recommend going with best. Obviously, these are going to be some that Chris Digital has that I don't, obviously. And some you want to keep in mind, if it says there's about like 16 or more of them, a lot of times those can be spam. I'm just looking down there because, you know, sometimes people will send stuff that's pretty much just spam. So niches blog 11. Let's see if this is, yeah, it's, it's not even loading. It's going to some crap website. So stuff like that can happen. Usually when you think about it, some of the best websites, if you want to get a really juicy backlink from a website, that's either going to cost a lot of money, or you're going to have to do a ton of outreach. You're probably not getting a lot of backlinks from them unless you do it consecutively or you have something set up. So usually some of the best and juiciest are only going to have one, maybe two social media explorer. Let's check this out. Okay, this looks like the uh, perfect type of website for doing guest posts, uh, September 1st, September 5th, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of different uh, niches, articles, but yeah, news and more, movies, cases, and so on and so forth. Now, there's something else that you can consider, especially for the fact that if you click on this, it's taking you to their homepage. That's good because you can always look for their contact information. Let's see, let's scroll down here. Uh, about, is there about, look for an email here. Whoops. Clicked on get, oops, hit back. It said get featured on social media expert. That's probably something you might want to look for. Our audience, our policy, featured posting. There you go. That's how you can actually reach out to them. But if you wanted to get more specific about the actual links that are coming from these specific websites, what you can do is I created a new window here or a new tab. If you go to backlink analytics and you type in the same domain there and scroll down, once again, it's going to be uh, sorted by the authority score. So you're going to see some of the best ones here. So I believe Chris Digital was on HubSpot. Yes. So what I can do, I'm just going to do control find and type in HubSpot. It shouldn't be too far down. And there it is. Why this is important because you'll actually get to see the article that was written. So I'm going to click on this here. We know that the anchor text is going to be 95% of buyers and it's going to sales funnel statistics. So something you want to keep in mind is usually when you're doing outreach for really big websites, they're usually not happy about linking to commercial or affiliate type of content. That's why, as you can see, it's going to sales funnel statistics, where I imagine it's all about sales funnel statistics, right? It's there to help out their uh, the viewers, so to speak. So, so right here, 95% of buyers, this is where it's going to go to some type of informational content. So that's something you also also want to keep in mind, usually if you're looking for competitor backlinks, if you've noticed that the links they are getting are going to informational content, there's usually a reason for that because the main website HubSpot here wanted it to be that way. Okay. We can also take a look at some of the other links here. So if I'm scrolling through going back to the top, what is the sales funnel overall can be informational, but obviously you can link to, you know, affiliate products. It really depends on how you go about it. Like if this was just, you know, click funnels review, Maybe, maybe not. They might not allow it, but that's going to be up to the discretion. Oops, clicked on the wrong button here. That's going to be up to the main website that you're reaching out to. So if we go here, Usability Geek looks great. Very nice website, clean, simple. I like it. I like it a lot. 
uh, contact us, become an author. Okay. So some ways to reach out to them. Also, that's pretty much what you need to do. What I like doing. Uh, if not, you can use, I believe it's hunter.io, which allows you to just put in a website and it'll give you some of the emails in case they're not seen. But once again, on Backlinko, that's great. It's links to the main page, main page, main page, sales funnel statistics, sales funnel builder. Those are no follow those. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Also, what we can do, let's just do this while I'm at it. Let's just go to follow. And let's go to active. So this is kind of combining backlink gap with a little bit more in case you want to see these specific uh, links and where they go. So we're looking at what is the sales funnel, uh, blog promotion sites, sales funnel statistics, marketing automation statistics. You'll notice that some of the best backlinks are more so going to informational content, but we have one right here. Look at this, timedoctor.com. This actually links to best webinar platforms, which is going to be you know, an affiliate related article. So that's something to keep in mind. So Time Doctor, scrolling down. Let's see what the anchor was. So we had small businesses. Uh, no, thanks anyway. Buzziness, there we go. And there it is, making outsourcing for the first time extremely cost effective for small businesses. So that's going to be the anchor uh, based on best webinar platforms for small business. So it is a target anchor based upon the uh, URL. So that's something to keep in mind. You also want to think about, are they going to be allowing commercial content? Is it going to be informational? And what type of anchors are they going to be used? Some websites can be very strict when it comes to using exact match for anchors. Uh, you know, eventually they do it too much, could be too spammy, whatever their reason is, you know, it's their website. So you got to obviously listen to what they have to say. Uh, and there's going to be a lot more. A lot of these are going to the main page. You can tell data box, these are going to be for from um, help a reporter out. Let's also do new, let's do only one links per referring domain. That'll make it easier for us to look through. And once again, this is just a continuation of the backlink gap. It's more about saying, hmm, which one looks great and where can I find where that link specifically was? Obviously, of course, what you can also do is when you go to these, just kind of see where you can reach out to them. So let's say we have Jeff's website. Okay, about contact, obviously how you can reach out to someone. And just kind of continuing on going through a few more. We did only one, so now we see our one of data box. And we got Time Doctor, Business Twitter. Okay, let's check this out. Great. And what was the anchor text we have for this? Chris Digital, okay, so just brand. Uh, once again, very simple. Sales Funnel Builder, Sales Funnel Builder. That looks like a referral rock. Also probably help a reporter out. We have Neil right here. Okay, so we're getting to Sales Funnel Builder. Target Anchor, not bad. Let's check this out. And we had, this was just going to be brand. So Chris, there we go. Well, we got a lot of stuff going on here. Oh my goodness, Neil. Uh, okay, so author bio. So he did a guest post here. So there you go content marketer and founder of Chris Digital, which links to Sales Funnel Builder. And overall, I think you kind of get the idea of going through. So overall, that's how you can use the backlink gap tool with SEMrush. Once again, when going through it, let's go back over here. Uh, it's pretty simple. You're just adding in your specific root domain. You can add more if you like, but going on from there, I like combining that with actually looking at more details when it comes to the backlinks analytics section. Uh, active is going to be good. Follow is going to be good. Unless for some odd reason you want no follow, that's going to be up to you. And we can do one each just so it doesn't have a ton more. It's easier to look through, especially if you have a website with thousands of them. It'll be much easier to look through. You can export them if you want. But what I like is actually seeing the anchor text, uh, where they're sending their links to is important. Obviously, if it's going to be informational content, that's probably what you're going to need to get your links to when you're moving forward. But all in all, I hope that helps you out when it comes to using this and combining it with another section of SEMrush. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to test them out as well. There will be a link for a free trial in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.